All right, for today, we're going to be looking at the law of sines. Let me talk about that rule first. Let me, going to be three ratios. Three ratios are going to equal each other. So first of all, let's say I have a triangle, just any triangle. And then I'm going to label my angles A, B, C, okay? Now for, before I go on, angles, I'm going to use capital letters. Sides, I'm going to use lowercase letters. So let me call this corner A, corner B, and corner C. So angle A, B, C. Another thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to label the sides. Angle A, I see where angle A is. I'm going to say side A is this one. Side A is opposite from corner, from angle A. Remember, opposite means far away. I see where angle B is. So I'm going to say this is angle B. And then I see where angle C is. And then I'm going to say this is angle C. Angle A is opposite from side A. Angle B is opposite from side B. Angle C is opposite from side C. Now, three, well, one rule we're going to use. I'm going to say the side A over sine of A, we're going to call this law of sines, is going to equal to side B over sine of B, which is equal to side C over sine C. So I gave you three fractions that are equal to each other. You only need to use two of them, okay? Now, one thing that we learned last week is flipping. I can also say sine A over side A is equal to sine of angle B over side B, which is equal to sine of angle C over side C. On the If I'm solving for a side, I'm going to use the first three. But let me emphasize, this is when you're solving for a side. I want the unknown. Whatever I'm solving for, I want it on top of the fraction. So side A, and then if you're solving for an angle, this is what we're going to use. So let me emphasize this is for an angle. Okay, so let's take a look. Again, you only need two fractions out of each. So let me take a look at here. Another thing is that angles, we have to use our common sense because I'm going to come to here. Some people might ask me, 128 degrees, is that angle A or is that angle C? All right, let's use our common sense for that one. I know an L shape that's 90 degrees. So less than 90, obviously, close it down. More than 90, open it up. So look at angle A. Angle A is less than 90. So it cannot be angle A. It has to be angle C. Again, use your common sense, right? Less than 90, more than 90. So we know 128 is angle C. One thing, one thing I'm going to tell you guys is if I give you two angles, you can find the measurement of the third angle. Right. The thing is that two angle, that all three angles add up to 180. So I have two angles. I'm going to go 180. I'm going to just grab a calculator. 180 minus 128 minus 19. Notice I said minus both cases. So 180 minus 128 minus 19 gives me 33. So that means that angle A is 33 degrees. If I give you two angles, you can find a third angle. Now, when I use the, th the one of my angles, I, for sure, I see that I have side 20. This is side A. I want to use angle A. And then here, I'm solving for side AB. That's this one. 
Now, remember the way we name, name the sides, A, B, C. This side is opposite from angle C, so this is side C. I'm solving for a side, so I'm gonna use for sure C over sine of angle C is equal to, then something that I know. I have no idea what side B is. So I'm gonna use A, because I know A, I know side A, over sine of a. So let me replace the values that I know. So I'm gonna go c over sine of 33 is equal to 20 over, oh no, now, no, my bad, this is not 33, this is 128, my bad. So c over sine of 128 equals 20 over sine of 33. To get C by itself, wouldn't I multiply both sides by sine of 128? Let me extend my fraction here. I know when I multiplied, so here on the left side, I'm just gonna multiply by sine of 128. When I multiplied, there's a fraction, I'm just gonna write it on the top, sine of 128. So C, let me share a calculator here. And I'm just gonna type all that out. I had, first of all, make sure you're dealing with degrees. So here I have radians, make sure you change it to degrees. This calculator, I recommend you use this calculator. So I had 20 times sine of 128. I'm gonna close my parentheses. It does matter if you close it or not. Divided by sine of 33. So let me remind you of the work. So it was 20 times sine of 128 divided by sine of 33. Let me bring up my calculator again. So I make sure I have that. 20 times sine of 128 divided by sine of 33, it says 28.93. Now my instructions, when I look at the instructions, it says round your answer to the nearest tenth. So that means one decimal place. My case is gonna be 28.9. So let me come back to the work, 28.9. It's hard the first time you see it. So that's why today I'm gonna be working 45 through 52. Okay, let's start at number 46. I'm gonna grab a calculator because I see two angles. So I'm gonna be able to solve for the third angle. I'm gonna go 180 minus 61 minus 91. So out of 180, I take away those two angles given. And I'm gonna say, the third angle is 28. And I'm asking you to solve for side BC, which is the one that we usually call A. Right, side A is opposite from angle A. I'm solving for a side, so I remembered A over sine of A is equal to C over sine of C. I have no idea what angle B is, or I mean, side B is. What I'm given is side C, so I have to use the fraction with C's. So I have A sine of 91 is equal to 28 over sine of 61. I'm gonna multiply both sides by sine of 91. So my fraction, I write it on top. So my calculator, I'm gonna go 28 times sine of 91 divided by sine of 61. Let me share my calculator here. I remember the question was, 28 times sine of 91 
divided by sine of 61. Make sure you look at the calculator, make sure you have what you need. Then press equal, round it to one decimal place, so 32.0. Now I'm gonna say the point zero at the end is optional. The point zero, if you just write 32 is the same thing, right? Okay, and let's take a look at number 47. Again, when there's two angles given, you can find a third one. And I'm gonna go 180, triangle is always 180. So 180 minus 44 minus 38, it gives me this third angle is 98. I know an L shape is 90, that one looks more than an L shape. So 98 makes sense. I have side A and I have angle A. I'm asking you to solve for AC. So look at the side AC. This is what we called side B, right? It's opposite from angle B. So I'm just gonna write B over sine of 38. Right. Notice I went B over sine of B equals 26, which is the side that I have, over sine of 44. I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of 38. Let me extend my fraction. Sine of 38. Okay, so 26 times sine of 38 divided by sine of 44. Let me bring my calculator out. I had 26 times sine of 38 divided by sine of 44. Make sure you have what you need. 23.0, my case just 23, right? The point zero is optional. If you type in point zero, you're fine. Okay, so hopefully you guys are like, ah, oh, solving for side is not that bad. Okay, so I have two angles given. So I'm gonna go 180 minus 47 minus 62. So that means the third angle is 71. And I'm asking you to solve for find, you know, side B, C, which is what I, I want to call side A. I have side C and I have all three angles. So I'm just going to go, I'm solving for side A. So I'm going to go A over sine of 47 equals 29 over sine of 62 make this fraction bigger. I'm going to multiply it by sine of 47. So I get A is equal to, I'm going to grab my calculator, 29 times sine of 47 divided by sine of 62. So let's see, 29. times sine of 47 divided by sine of 62. Don't forget to close your parentheses. And get 24.02, so 24.0. The point zero is optional, so I'm even gonna write this, it doesn't matter. 24.0. All right, so solving for a side was not that bad. Now let's talk about solving for an angle. Now it would be nice if I had two angles, right? Because then I could find a third angle. But now I only gave you one angle. I gave you angle A, but you have side A. So that's good. You have side C, and I'm asking you to solve for angle C. 
Now, because I'm solving for an angle, I want sine on the top. So let me just write sine of C over side C equals sine of 89. Actually, this side C, I already know what side C is, right? It's 8. So I have sine of 89 over 16. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So I know sine of C is going to equal to sine of 89 times 8 divided by 16. Big emphasis on the sine. Make sure you close your parentheses. The 8 at the end. This 8 has nothing to do with your sign. So do, do not go uh, sign of 898, right? Make sure you close your parentheses on the sign. So let me just type in what we had. So sign of 89. Um, times 8. divided by 16. Okay, now I'm not quite done. This is not angle C. I'm not quite done. So because I'm still working, let me round it to four decimal places. So 0 0.4999. Let me come back here. So it was 0 0.4999. Except because I'm still working, I'm going to run it to four decimal places. 0 0.4999. Okay. Now, because uh, this is sine of C, not angle C. Now, we learned something last week. We learned that angle C is going to equal to sine inverse of 0 0.4999. Again, because I'm still working, use four decimal places. Okay, so let me bring my calculator out. I need the inverse, so let me go my second sine inverse of 0 0.4999. I'm gonna close parentheses. So I have to run this to the nearest tenth. Okay, it's all right. I can go degrees nearest tenth. So the second nine pushes the first nine because this nine is at the limit, pushes this other nine. So it's 30.0. Or just 30. Okay, so solving for an angle is a little bit harder. Let's take a look at number 50. I'm asking to solve for angle C. We have side C and side A. Okay. So let me just write this as sine of C, because I'm solving for C. So sine of angle C over 15, right? Sine of angle C over side C equals sine of 77 over 20. Sine of angle eight over side eight. I'm a, I know I'm gonna multiply both sides by 15. So I get that sine of C. Okay, let me grab my calculator out. I need to get rid of this second because I need sine of 77, close parentheses, times 15 divided by 20. Use two decimal places, so 0 0.7308. Okay. 73.08. Not quite done yet. I'm going to say angle C is sine inverse 
of 0 0.7308. Okay, so let's see. Sine inverse, 0 0.7308. 46 point ninety five. So the 5 pushes the 9, but the 9 is at the limit, so it pushes the 6. So I'm going to call this 47. Oh, round it to a whole number again. So angle C is 47 degrees. Ooh. Two more questions, all right? Let's take a look at 51. Let me flip the page. I've got to use your common sense. All right, for 73, is that angle B? Is that angle C? Um, angle C looks about 90. Uh, probably a little bit more than 90. So I'm going to say that's angle B. What we have is side B and side A. So it makes sense that I have angle B. And I'm solving for angle A. So I'm just going to write sine of A over 5. It's equal to sine of 73 over 23. Whoa, let me multiply both sides by five. So I have sine of A. Okay, so I have to go multiply that. I'm gonna remember it. Let me get rid of this second. So I have to go sine of 73, close parentheses, times five divided by 23. Oh, let me type it again. Sine of 73 times 5 divided by 23. Make sure you have what you need. It says 0 0.2079. Remember, I'm going to four decimal places. So 2079. So 0. 2079. So that means that angle A is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.2079. If you don't round it to four decimal places, if you only round that part to one decimal place, more than likely you're going to be a little bit off. Okay. So I want second sine inverse of 0 0.2079, 11.99. All right, so that nine pushes the, the first nine, which that first nine pushes the 11. So I'm gonna say angle A, it's equal to 12.0 or just 12. Okay, now this one will give me a decimal at the end. So I like that. Okay, so let's see. I have side A, I have side C, and I'm solving for angle C. I have angle A as well. So see, I'm solving for angle C. So let me write sine of angle C over 17 is equal to sine of 78 over 22. Let me multiply by 17. So I get that sine of C. Okay, so sine of 78. Oh, let's multiply this out. I have to get rid of that. So sine of 78 times 17 divided by 22. I'm not quite done yet, so four decimal places. So 0 0.7558. So 0 0.7558. So I'm going to say that angle C is equal to sine inverse 
of 0 0.7558 Let me see this real quick. Sign inverse of 0 0.7558. So 49.09. .09. So that's going to give me 49.1. Okay, now this point 0.1 is not optional. So 49.1. Okay. Let me zoom out. That's what we did today.